Hey guys, what's going on today? This is me, Dal Sue. It has been a, a little while since I've recorded one of these videos, and uh, I, I just want you guys to know I'm not quitting YouTube or anything like that, those of you who've been supporting the channel for a while. I'm just having to make it a little sporadic because of all the, all the things I have to do in real life to actually make a buck. Um, but Banish is one of the first games I played on the channel, and it, it recently got uh, a patch to one of my favorite mods for Banished, which is Colonial Charter. Uh, this is 1.75 Journey. Um, I've played around with it a little bit. It seems to just add a whole lot more um, flavor, I'd say. They're, they're, um, Colonial Charters are all about more options, more ways to survive. Uh, not necessarily changing the core mechanics so much, but just giving the player a whole lot more choice. And this just seems to enhance that choice a little bit. So really excited. I'm going to be doing a full playthrough of this, probably thinking about 50 episodes. And I have a very unique uh, goal for this playthrough, which I'm going to talk about in a minute. But before we get started, uh, let's go ahead and, and choose all our settings. I don't have a particularly clever name um, planned out ahead, but I do have my settings planned out. We'll go ahead and name it Tut, Tut Y Light. Why not? Tut Y Light. <laughs> so... We're going to do Red Desert because I just like the way it looks. And it also creates sort of, I think, a, a bit fewer a bit fewer uh, waterways and stuff. We're going to do, I think, medium map size. I think large might get a little carried away um, because it's just a little bit too big. And it, it tends to slow down the processing power and all that kind of stuff. Climate's going to be mild because I'm a wimp. But we are going to play on hard mode. Um, shipwrecked El Dorado. Shipwrecked means you start with this little ship that's sort of like a barn and has very few supplies in it. And you have to really, really make something out of nothing. It's a very hard starting condition. El Dorado, I believe, just makes everything into a jungle, um, which is going to look really cool with the red desert. Now, as I go ahead, I'm turning d disasters off because I hate them. As I'm letting this load, um, my goal for this playthrough is to try and make something really beautiful, really pretty, really aesthetically pleasing. Now, those of you who have played Banish before, you know that it, if you try to just focus on aesthetics you will fail miserably because there are so many things especially at the beginning requiring your attention just to survive so goal number one is to survive goal number two is to build a sort of beautiful city like a colonial town um, and I'm probably gonna be doing some of that work off-camera just because I, I feel like it will get a little bit grindy if I'm not too careful um, but we are going to be working on and this seems like a pretty good map uh, for it. Let's take a sort of wider angled look at it using the mini map. Okay, so we got two lakes down south. The rest of the land is fairly flat, where it's ringed by mountains on all sides. And I think this little um, area here would be perfect for a little medieval town. Um, medieval, colonial, I'm not really sure how exactly I'm going to theme it, but we'll sort of work on that as we progress. There are so many things. Um, that you can do in Colonial Charter. I mean, all kinds of walls and just, there's a lot of polishing that you can do. And so I've never really, I've always played very pragmatic, pragmatically, you know, trying to just make all the tools I need and everything like that. But this, this playthrough is gonna be more about style. Now with that in mind, we're not even gonna think about style and probably, until, you know, probably the 10th episode because the starting conditions here are pretty tough. We start off with 1200 potatoes uh, just enough coats and tools for our existing settlers. That's the first thing they're going to do is go grab those. And almost no firewood. So the first thing we really need here, well, we need houses, obviously, but we also need to feed ourselves. I don't see a great place for any fishing to happen that's close by. Um, fishing is generally one of the early ways I feed myself, but, like, this is... Uh, this might be 50% productive. Down here might be a little more. Uh, over here, especially if I can get a dock out here and then put some of the um, dock fisheries, that, that'll be really good in the future. But for right now, gathering hut is the way we're going to go. And we'll probably do two gathering huts if we can fit them. We could pretty much fit two gathering huts there. One about there. One about there. Not going to be perfectly efficient. I could also do one to the south and one to the north. These are going to be moved later, obviously, but for right now, 
Yeah, I think we might do that. We might do two gatherers huts. Boom, boom. Now, we don't have a whole lot of people to work those gathering huts. As you'll be able to see here. We only have eight laborers right now. We do have uh, nine children. As you can see, we start off with nine kids. I'm going to get rid of that. Open up the, um, the dialogue box. If I can find it here, the event event log. And yeah, now we're already set up and, and ready to play Banished, okay? So we got housing and gatherers huts. Those things are first. Now the very first, first thing we have to do is make sure we have a stockpile because we're going to want to grab some resources, like some trees. There's some stone right here. So where do I want to put this? It's kind of important. My first instinct is always to put it right here by the barn, but because I'm going to be working out this way and chopping and stuff, I think it makes more sense to put it like right here. And I think 4x4 four four will serve for right now. Now with that done, the first things I'm going to do is I'm going to harvest some trees and some stone in a pretty small amount, pretty insignificant amount there, but just enough to get me started on my path here. Because the first thing we want to build is a gatherer's hut, followed by, I think, five houses, which are going to just be crammed in here. All this is going to be, you know, fixed later on when we go to make our pretty little town. And what we'll probably do is this will be farmland, this will be quarries and industry, and then this will be, this is like promontory or whatever you want to call it, will be the, the actual town itself with walls and stuff and a, and a key wall and all that kind of good stuff. It'll look really cool. But for now, we got to start small by chopping a few trees and getting ready to place our gatherer's huts so we don't starve to death. So a gatherer's hut uh, is a little bit expensive. 30 wood, 12 stone. So that's what we need. We need 24 stone, 60 wood. Just to get ourselves started there. I always want to press escape to get out of these menus, but you can't do that. <laughs> Alright, that's not going to do. Not enough wood. Give me some more wood. And grab that. That might do it. 60 wood we need. So we're going to keep grabbing it. And then, of course, we need wood for houses. For right now, those gatherer huts are super important. And I would speed it up, but I'm, I'm every second counts right now because we got to make sure we get food and housing before winter time. Food, housing, and firewood. Those are the three main early game things. Then you want education. Then you want a blacksmith then you're kind of starting to get self-sufficient at that point. But for right now, we're not at all. All right. Once this gets to 60 wood, we'll go ahead and start our, our two gatherers huts. And then once all the stuff is moved over there, we'll switch to some builders. All right, this is looking good now. So I'll pause the game while I think about this. All right, um, so we want it just far enough away to where we have the area all to ourselves and we're not gonna be building and, and encroaching in that area, but also close enough to where they can easily deliver to, to our ship, which is our barn right now. So I think this is a fantastic spot, I'm gonna do that. Same thing over here, far enough away to where we're not encroaching a whole terrible amount. But just far enough away, or just close enough to where it's not a big deal to deliver the goods. Okay, that's going to work for us, so let's do those things. Once all those goods are delivered, I'm going to probably switch four people to builders and then have my other four laborers gather up all the stuff we're going to need for houses, because that's going to be the next thing. But we're going to want to see all those goods get delivered first. And I think we don't quite have enough stone. I think we miscalculated. Because you need 12 stone, right? 
Where are you? I hate this. When you first put them down, you can never, ever find them. Unless you leave them pinned. Anyway. That's going to start happening. I, I love when the people are homeless because you can see where they're going. It's fantastic. Not so easy once they find homes and then the little icons disappear. Anyway, there's going to have to be some clearing done as well. Here we are. And we need just another four stone. That's unfortunate. But we can't really interrupt our laborers right now. Because they're doing the important work of getting this cleared off so that we can start. And it's possible they could get some stone from that, but it looks like it's going to be mostly trees. Which I guess we'll have to just accept. Alright, well we'll deal with the stone situation, the stone problem later. Mainly we'll want to get one of them built. Because we're probably not going to fill them both up right away. We're going to want to leave a few people out. But some of these kids will mature quickly because we don't have a school right now. So they'll mature really quickly. And we'll have a few more laborers to go into building those houses. And a fire chopper, firewood chopper. Things like that. So that's taking quite a little time. And did we get this one started too? Hard to tell. Anyway, I'm more focused on just getting one, so. They're all bringing resources back, I assume, now. I don't like seeing so many people just linger, but most of them are kids. Can cycle through here working 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 they're all working which is good did I see that we have a germane yeah all right this is going a little slow so we're gonna speed up time I guess a little bit so we can make sure we got both of these things done here And all the goods that need to be delivered. Minus a tiny little bit of stone. Which looks like someone just placed a little more there. Must have been from this clearing. Yeah, so it'll work out. And yeah, it's time to shift four people into building. So that they can build those things. And then the rest of you pause it so we don't waste too much time here we're gonna get some trees and some stone because we need to build more houses or some houses we don't even have any houses yet so if you guys do that and the builders do the building we'll all be good look at that it's going up so fast all right I feel safe now that I have these buildings available I'm not gonna fill it up just yet because we need to make sure this gets done and all that chopping and stuff that needs to be done. Where are you going, guys? want to watch this. Make sure they don't run out of stuff to do here. Very important to have all that stuff stockpiled. Alright, the gatherer hut is done. So with that in mind, we're going to start our houses. I think I'm going to go with the rustic abode. Because it allows four people, whereas these only allow three. Yeah, Tiny Shack only allows three. So we need five of them, I believe. Yeah, we have 17 homeless people, so five times four is 20. Should be about right. Now, I'm not going to place a whole lot of importance on, on where they go. Because I'm really just trying to survive right now and not, <laughs> not pay too much attention to what's making it pretty or not pretty. But we'll sort of get a little ring formation going there, a little semicircle. And that'll be a good start. All right. I like that. Let's go for it. So now they should start delivering to these house sites. And as soon as these houses are done, we're going to switch some people into actually doing the gathering that we need of the herb, of the um, forest 
food, the mushrooms and whatnot that we need to survive this first winter. And we should be in pretty good shape at that point. We're also going to, of course, need a fire chopper. We just got a new laborer, that's excellent. Yes, I know, everything's low. Alright, food is already getting low. So I think we're going to have to put two laborers each. Where is this place? Is it not done? Why does it not have the question mark above it like the other one does? Right, there it is. Okay, so it got two somehow. And it got one somehow. Oh. Yeah, this is the total number, right? So I forgot. Okay. So now there's two in each. There is no food, but that's going to be okay. Because what I'm going to do... Is I'm going to lose the builders. For right now. Firewood is not so crucial because we're at 70 degrees and they're just being big babies. What is crucial though is that these houses get the food that they need. So what we're going to do is do a little wild gathering. Now I'm trying to keep it away from my two gathering huts. So I'm going to say like right in here. That should get us enough food to until our gathering huts start functioning. I'm hoping. Otherwise, we might lose somebody, but I don't. I don't think so. It's because these houses took it all. Yeah. So we should pe see people start bringing stuff back to the shipwreck. And they're not doing it quite as fast as I would like. Do not want to see people start starving. But I think it's going to be okay. Ah, god damn it. Alright, well we had two people starve. But I think it's going to balance out from there. Hopefully. Because we've got our gathers up and running. We're going to start to see some people bringing back food. Yeah, that was unfortunate. But um, I don't know if I could have avoided that too easily. Okay, so now we need a wood chopper. Let's pause it. We ought to be able to do this pretty quickly. That's going to be under resources. We'll do the like casual chopper right here in the middle. We're going to have to make one person a builder. Yeah, that's unfortunate that we had a death, or two deaths rather, but possibly unavoidable. I don't think people will start to drop dead from cold just yet. And we are seeing some food brought back and then get immediately scooped up into the houses. So we're going to have to make this one builder into a firewood chopper real quick. Thankfully we had a new child born and a new laborer. So we're pretty much back to where we were as long as there's no more starvation happening. This guy's going to finish. It's going to be great. They are still bringing food from over here, I, I believe. All right, so we're going to get one wood chopper going. 200 is a fine uh, limit. That'll keep the people warm. We'll get rid of this builder into labor. Reserve of food is getting low again. So we could move those laborers. Ah, damn it. <laughs> I always get this menu closed on accident. But what we could do is we could take uh, two or three laborers and put them into our gathering huts just to make sure We're producing quite a lot of food I think it's gonna be okay from here really slow it down to five 
Don't let things get away from us. All right, next thing we need is a school. We just got a new laborer, so that's great. Sabrinly. Sabrinly. Yeah, I think the next thing we definitely want is a school. Um, unless we're going to go for more food. Which I'm anxious to see if we're okay. What I'll do... I'll put two more people into food production. That means that, you know, we got six people gathering, so that should be enough. We do eventually want to clear out all this stone so that they can be fully efficient, because they're not going to be fully efficient until this is just all trees. But they should be efficient enough. Another thing we could do is put a fisherman down here. But I think most important right at the moment is going to be is going to be school. As long as we have enough food, that is. Which we seem to be <laughs> hovering around disaster here. We don't really want to grow much more. Which I don't think would be a huge issue. We might have two or three more kids. Which we need. We need to keep having kids because people do eventually die in this game. Alright, I'm thinking we should go for the schoolhouse now. Um, the cheapest one, which is going to be just this schoolhouse. Start getting people educated. We will have to probably shift one person into being a builder, which is fine. Got to keep a close eye on our food. I'm pretty sure we don't have any seeds. It might be worth just seeing. Like, this is free, right? Yeah, it's free, so... But yeah, we don't have any seeds. So we're going to want to cancel that. So stone and logs are going to be low. We're going to need to harvest some more stones. And we want to do that when when we can. We want to do that um, out here where our, where our gatherers are working. So what I'm going to do is get some stone cut from there. That should take a little while, but not too bad. Not anything that's going to disrupt the game. Once they're done with that, we'll need more wood as well. Our firewood chopper has seen fit to use up our supply of logs, unfortunately. But yeah, I think we'll finish the school, and that will be a great first episode for our new series. Humble beginnings, but trust me. I'm going to deck this place out. It's going to be great. Uh, as long as I can survive. <laughs> that was a pretty tough start, man. We ran out of food quick. I guess I, I should have known. But anyway, we lost two people. Had to be done. So that's going to slow our progress a little bit. I might play through a little bit off camera once I get the school up. The next thing I'm going to be thinking about is a blacksmith. But we really are going to need some more people to make all that happen, I think. We've got all of us, all of the stone we need. So I'm tempted now to tell them to cut some trees, but I want, you know, they won't cut the trees until they finish this work anyway, so. We might as well just let them work and finish this school up in the next episode. Thanks, guys. I uh, will see you then. Bye.